Milk is the essential food for a newborn baby, it provides all the nutrients necessary for healthy growth and development for the baby. Breast or mammary gland produces the milk in mother's body. Breastfeeding will foster a strong bond between mother and child. In this video, we'll explore the anatomy of mammary gland. How the mammary gland produce, the nourishing milk that mother provides to their children. Benefits of breast milk and breastfeeding, for both the child and the mother. Changes occurred in mother's body, related to breastfeeding. Join us as we uncover the incredible process behind milk production and its vital role in early life. Mammary glands are a pair of external organs of the female. They are commonly called as breasts. Their main function is secretion of milk to nurture the baby. These are modified sweat glands and remain undeveloped till puberty. At puberty, they start developing under the influence of estrogen and progesterone hormones. The external surface of each breast has a projection called the nipple. Each nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area, called the areola. Internally the breast consists of the glandular tissue, forming mammary glands, the fibrous tissue and the fatty or adipose tissue. In each breast the mammary glands are divided into about 15 to 20 compartments, called mammary lobes. Each lobe is made up of a number of lobules. Each lobule is composed of grape-like, clusters of milk-secreting glands termed alveoli. These alveoli are responsible for producing milk. Mammary tubules connect alveoli with mammary duct. Several mammary ducts join to form a wider part, the mammary ampulla. It is also called lactiferous sinuses. There is an extension of mammary ampulla that carries milk to nipple is called lactiferous ducts. There are several lactiferous ducts meets in each nipples. When a woman becomes pregnant, her body undergoes hormonal changes, primarily influenced by two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. These hormonal shifts prepare the breasts for milk production. Shortly before childbirth, another hormone called prolactin, which is responsible for milk production, increases in the woman's body. During pregnancy, under the influence of hormonal changes, alveoli begin to multiply and enlarge. By the time the baby is born, the mother's breasts have around, one locks 50,000s of alveoli in each breast. This is many times more than the number of alveoli that a non-pregnant woman has. Inside each alveolus, there are specialized cells called secretory cells, or alveolar cells. These cells are the key players in milk production. After delivery, when the baby begins to suckle's nipple, it stimulates the nerves in the nipple and areola, sending signals to the brain. Brain receives these signals and send instructions to the breast to produce milk. Then alveolar cells produce and secrete milk components such as proteins, fats, lactose, and immune factors. The hormone oxytocin is released from the pituitary gland in the brain in response to baby's suckle. Triggers the letdown reflex, also known as the milk ejection reflex. This reflex causes the muscles around the alveoli to contract and pushing the milk out from alveoli into the mammary tubules. Through mammary tubules milk will reach into mammary duct. 
Through mammary duct, milk flows to mammary ampulla, where the milk may be stored before going to lactiferous ducts. Each lactiferous duct carries milk to the nipple. A nursing woman secretes 1 to 2 liters of milk per day. Breast milk production operates on a supply and demand basis. The more frequently and effectively the baby nurses, the more milk is produced. When the baby empties the breast during feeding, it signals to the body to produce more milk to meet the baby's needs. In the initial days after childbirth, the breast produce, a thick yellowish fluid called colostrum. Colostrum is highly concentrated, and contains antibodies and other immune factors to provide the baby, with essential protection. After a few days, colostrum transitions into mature milk, which is thinner and lighter in color, but contains a perfect balance of nutrients, including proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals, specifically tailored to meet the nutritional needs of a growing baby. It also contains antibodies and other immune factors that help to protect the baby from infections and diseases. Breastfeeding has many advantages for the baby's health and development. It helps strengthen the baby's immune system, reducing the risk of respiratory infections, ear infections, allergies, and other illnesses. Breast milk is easily digested, leading to less constipation and diarrhea. It is also associated with a reduced risk of obesity, diabetes, and certain childhood cancers. Breastfeeding provides several benefits for the mother as well. It helps the uterus contract and return to its pre-pregnancy size faster. Breastfeeding can also aid in postpartum weight loss as it burns extra calories. Additionally, breastfeeding has been linked to a lower risk of breast and ovarian cancer. The composition of breast milk can vary from woman to woman and can change throughout the course of breastfeeding. The levels of various components can be influenced by factors such as the mother's diet, health, and environmental factors. Breastfeeding promotes bonding between the mother and the baby. Physical skin-to-skin -skin and eye contact during breastfeeding help strengthen the emotional connection between the two. For the first six months of life, the World Health Organization WHO, recommends exclusive breastfeeding, meaning the baby receives only breast milk and no other foods or liquids, including water. At around six months of age, infants begin to eat solid foods, in addition to breast milk. Breastfeeding continues alongside the introduction of solids, gradually decreasing in frequency, as the baby eats more solid foods. Breast stopping milk production, or breast weaning is highly individual and there is no fixed age at which breastfeeding must end. This can happen gradually and naturally, when a mother and baby are ready to stop breastfeeding. The key driver for milk production is demand. When a baby breastfeeds less frequently, the breast receives fewer signals to produce milk, leading to a gradual decrease in milk supply. Mother's body reabsorbs the milk, that is already present in the mammary glands. The breast tissue gradually shrinks. This can result in a reduction in breast size over time. Some women may experience a smooth transition with minimal discomfort. While others may have more noticeable changes in breast size or experience mild discomfort as their bodies adapt. Wearing a supportive bra and cold compresses can help alleviate discomfort during the weaning process.